Okay, AP Psych class, welcome to video number three for Unit 11 on testing and individual differences. We're going to talk about dynamics and extremes in intelligence. So the first question to ask ourselves here is uh, the same question we'd asked in Unit 9, stability or change. Um, does our intelligence change? Is it modifiable or does it stay relatively um, the same over the lifespan? Well, um, given the you know, earlier uh, tests, um, there's probably not a lot to be said about, you know, uh, younger than three, right? Um, and that that's kind of hard to determine whether or not, you know, the observations or, or intelligence tests prior to, you know, age of four are, are really going to protect uh, or predict the person's uh, like future aptitudes. By about age four, though, um, a person's uh, performance on an intelligence test are, are going to start to predict adolescent and adult scores. And amazingly enough, we have um, there being some strong correlation between early readers, those that can read at an early age, and their success on the IQ test. But remember um, what we had said before, it's very hard to to distinguish the difference or, or, or draw the line between achievement and aptitude and that obviously those early readers get a leg up uh, in, in that you know their their achievement in vocabulary acquisition and in reading skills are going to allow them to answer questions on an aptitude test better than than others um, we can see that by about age seven that um, it's it's not fixed, but intelligence scores tend to rel stabilize. And that um, I in research that's been collected, uh, wonderful longitudinal research that was conducted in Scotland, we actually have a lot of compelling evidence that uh, intelligence test scores, you know, in, in early adolescence, you know, 11, 12 years old, or actually the same or similar scores you know when the people are well into their 70s and 80s and so it tends to be uh that the answer on traditional intelligence test is is stability yet um i'll be interested to hear your opinions um after reading uh sternberg's uh um description of the rainbow project article so we'll discuss that in class Okay, if we want to talk about the extremes of intelligence, we can talk about uh, either end, right? We're talking about stu two standard deviations um, away from that score uh, of 100. And so when we talk about the low extreme, uh, we would be discussing what is now referred to as an intellectual disability. Um, it was previously referred to as mental retardation, right? And so we're talking about limited mental abilities, a score at or below 70. Um, it can vary, right? And so I have listed there for you mild, moderate, severe, profound with uh, IQ scores uh, following to give you the approximate range. Um, at the mild level, uh, individuals are probably learning uh, academic skills up to, you know, about a sixth grade level um, and with assistance can obviously achieve, you know, good uh, self-supporting social and vocational skills. Uh, many people um, at this level of an intellectual development disability um, may, you know, that may go unnoticed by the vast majority of friends and family. Um, they just may need some support in, in times of stress. Um, the moderate level uh, means that w we're talking about progressing to about a second grade level academically, um, and adults may contribute to their own support by, um, you know, getting jobs in, in specific workshops geared towards individuals with intellectual disability. When we're talking about the severe level, we're talking about people that, you know, may be able to learn to talk and perform simple work tasks, but are generally unable to, um, you know, care for themselves independently or, you know, profit from any sort of like job um, or vocational trade. Uh, profound that's listed as below 20 but obviously it's, it's very hard to approximate a score when we are at this level or degree of intellectual disability um, these individuals were, would require constant aid and, and supervision and so um, you know those are just the different uh, varying degrees of that um, it uh, I mean that's the obviously the low end so we're talking about you know a, a small percentage of the population uh, when we talk about the other end of things we're talking about the high extreme 
right? So we're talking about, you know, the those IQ scores um, above 130. Um, and so we're talking, again, about the outliers on a traditional uh, intelligence test. Um, these people are the ones that are often labeled as gifted, right? And, um, you know, the, the gifted education programs are, are often great, right, in that, um, you know, they can provide enrichment opportunities for, for individuals that can, you know, thrive by, you know, receiving additional, you know, experiences and challenges in school. Uh, you know, critics of of these sorts of pull-out uh, gifted programs, though, will note that um, when we track students by aptitude, uh, we often generate what's known as a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? That the people that are implicitly labeled um, ungifted um, kind of aren't motivated to be challenged because they don't feel like they can. Um, and so denying uh, these enrichment opportunities to students can mean that we kind of pigeonhole people into um, expectations because of uh, of their aptitude. And so again, you know, we can address some of these things when we look at um, at, at Sternberg's uh, article in class. Um, so, you know, is it important to label students in that we need to provide them appropriate developmental placement uh, in schools? Uh, sure, but but it, you know, should be used as a diagnostic tool. Uh, it, it shouldn't be used as like the identity of the student and, and a reason to deny them challenging and enriching opportunities. All right, so there's your, your basic background on uh, dynamics and extremes. Uh, make sure that you come ready to uh, ask any questions that you may have and to discuss uh, Sternberg's take on stability or change with this Rainbow Project and what he would have to say about the um, stability or modification of an IQ score. So thanks for listening.